Hi, in the previous mailbag video, Robert Bruce sent in eight of these very nice Russian Nixie tubes, and I love Nixie tubes, they're fantastic. Look, I've got them all lit up here, they're all working, and I mentioned in the mailbag I might do a project with it. Well, let's give it a burl. And these are the Russian B model, actually has the decimal point in here, so we can have an eight digit uh, counter with decimal point anywhere. This is going to be great. And Robert kindly sent in the original Russian data sheet for this thing, because I don't think there's any uh, English data sheets available, although it could be wrong. Um, this is basically the, sorry I can't pronounce um, these in Russian, but they're generally known as the uh, IN12 uh, series Nixie tube. In this case there's an A and a B model. You can see we've got the B model there, so the B model actually has pin 12 connected here, which is the uh, decimal point that we saw before. Before. And these come in uh, different types. You might have seen the uh, vertical ones that look like uh, tubes, you know, old fashioned tubes with the pins all in the bottom. Um, I much prefer these ones. These are much nicer because you mount these directly on a PCB like that and be mounted. Well, it depends whether or not you want right angle. The others are good for right angle. These are good for the application that I've got in mind for this thing, which you'll see in a future video. I won't tell you what it is yet. But uh, basically, we're going to have an eight-digit uh, counter display. So let's take a close-up view of this. If you haven't seen one before, we've got our nipple on the bottom. Love the nipple. And that uh, keeps the vacuum inside these things. These things are vacuum uh, sealed. So if you're making a PCB cutout, of course, you can't just uh, snap that off. Just don't come along with your side cutters and break it off. You've got to drill a hole in and have that uh, sit in inside your board. And what it basically is, is a cold cathode display, because there's no heater in this thing, unlike uh, valves, so it doesn't work uh, by way of the thermionic emission, like uh, valves do. And you can see that there's various levels inside there, they're all separated with these uh, ceramic spaces in there like that, and each one is a metal digit. You can see all the different digits, so it's got all the different numbers in there. It's got, you know, a zero through to nine, a plus the uh, decimal point as well. So, and they're all wired in. You can see them going in there like that. And they're just a metal um, outline of the digit that you want displayed. And you can see a metal mesh in here like this in the front. That is actually the anode. You apply your positive voltage to that. You apply your negative voltage to any one of the other digit uh, cathode plates in there and they'll start to glow if you're giving them enough voltage and current. And the way they glow is um, they're basically uh, neon type uh, lamps. You can think of them as that. The gas in there is usually uh, mostly neon, but it has some mercury and possibly some argon as well in there. And basically the cathode, i.e. the digit that you're displaying, when you apply a potential between the anode grid and that, the actual cathode digit will get a nice glow around them. In this case, a beautiful orange that you saw before. And I hook it up to my high voltage power supply through a dropper resistor, and you can see we've got the digit eight lit up there, and it's just one digit. So unlike a seven segment display, it's not made up of segments. You've just got one uh, segment shaped like the number eight. And in this case here, we've got the number two, and you can see that in there, even though if you have a look in the side, number two is all the way back there. So that digit is all the way back there. It's got all those digits in front of it, but you can still see it because it's basically glowing and you can see the glow around the other digits and through the mesh. Now, if we take a look at the data sheet, please forgive my uh, Russian, but you don't need to know Russian. Uh, usually it's, you know, fairly obvious uh, because the numbers and units are pretty universal. We're talking 170 volts here. This would be a nominal voltage, 2.5 milliamps could be a nominal current or could be a maximum current, not entirely sure. Um, and then 0 0.3 milliamps here, well, that would be the minimum uh, sustaining current to keep the thing on once you've turned it on. And that's all we really need to know. They've got a few more down here. This 200 here is probably the absolute maximum voltage, 120 to 170, that would be the uh, sustaining uh, voltage range there. And 2 to 3.5, well, maybe that's the Maybe that's the maximum with 0.7 average. Uh, let's try and translate. 
And we mostly got that right by the looks of it. Uh, using Google Translate here, no more than 170 indications for current figures. Um, yeah, at the 100 uh, degrees that we had there, that was the viewing angle. 120 to 170 sustain discharge. There you go. They actually got the word sustain in there. 2 to 3.5 for digits for the decimal point, no more than 0.7 operating current average. So the digits are higher than the decimal point. So if you're gonna use the decimal point, you actually wanna use that at a lower current, presumably, but that's all you need to know, voltage and current. By the way, it's real easy to find pin one. It's the white one there. There you go, dead giveaway. Okay, I'll show you what I've got uh, set up here. I've got my high voltage uh, power supply set to 170 volts here, uh, just measuring the current, and I've got my uh, deck A resistance box here so that we can adjust the uh, current, uh, the dropper resistor effectively, because in the final design we're going to need a dropper resistor, and I've got a 20k resistor in there, 1.67 milliamps. It works just fine, and it switches on just fine. There will be slight discrepancies, of course, between uh, different tubes. And I've got fixed exposure on the camera, so you'll be able to see the um, absolute change in the brightness there. So 1.67 uh, milliamps, let's actually dial um, that, you can see, back to 10k, so 2.75 milliamps. There's a difference there, but let's whack in, let's go up to 120k there, or 100k, there you go, and it's still on, it's still on at 0.4 milliamps, but will it start up at that? So I'll switch it off. And yep, it still starts up at that, but let's go to say 200k. Oh, it's still on 0.3. That was below the data sheet value, wasn't it? 0.2 now. It's still just on, so it's holding in there, but I don't suspect it'll start up. Oh, no, we're lucky. Oh, it's a lucky day. Go and buy a lotto ticket. 0.4 milliamps. Let's actually dial up that voltage. We can see if we go up to 200 volts, it gets brighter. If we go down 160, it's still sustaining that, but you might be able to see actually not all of it, only partial part of that digit is actually glowing. So yeah, I don't think that one's gonna start up. And of course it makes a fool out of me, doesn't it? <laughs> Damn it. But let's go back to uh, seven digits here. I won't bother wiring that one back in. And I've got 140 volts um, with uh, 10k in there, will it start up? And I have basically only got the one dropper resistor for all of them, so you wouldn't do that in practice. But let's see if any of them start up. Oh, two of them. Two of them got there, and sometimes you actually see them come on uh, later. But let's wind our voltage up there. There you go, our decimal point came on. Another digit came on as we go up. So as I said, there's gonna be slight discrepancies um, between those, so, but let's drop it back down to 10k. 12 milliamps for all of them, that's pretty good. Um, that's uh, still within ballpark and they're all on, no worries whatsoever. So we can turn that voltage down and we're still sustaining at, oh, just at 130 volts, really drops between 130 and 140 and then boom, it's off. And there we go, it doesn't switch immediately all back on. So there's some threshold there that some of them are not meeting. The just slight discrepancies between the tubes. So that's cool. Now we can uh, design our circuit uh, driving these puppies. Let's go. The first thing we're going to need is a high voltage power supply and Robert uh, was kind enough to send in this little uh, kit which I'll uh, link in it down below and there's tons of these um, on various websites and eBay. You can just buy Nixie, high voltage Nixie tube uh, driver kits. Most of them are like 9 to 12 volts input. I was going to power this whole thing by 5 volts but yeah, I, you know, I don't want to go roll my own high voltage power supply. I just, I just want to get this thing done. So I've got this in hand. I'm going to use this. This is a 12 volt input to a selectable voltage output. It'll do 170 volts. It'll do uh, five watts for this particular one. And that's 29 milliamps um, capability at 170 volts. More than enough to drive our uh, eight digits here if we only need, you know, a couple of milliamps each. No worries. And the good thing about that is it's just got a header on there. We can boom it solder that directly just you know flat down onto our board no worries could mount it vertically but in my case I'm going to mount it uh, horizontally like that so no worries that'll work a treat
There we go, a bit of a goof on the uh, layout of the cap and the inductor there, the spacing on that. I'll get a vertical uh, pin header for that. Um, no, that transistor is not missing, it's actually there, that's an IRF uh, 2, IRDF uh, 220 in the um, 4 pin dip package there, so no worries, um, I, you know, height wise it's okay, maybe I could have uh, bent a couple of the parts over to get a lower height profile, but it should be okay for my purpose. And just a little tip with uh, pin headers like this, you can put them in a little breadboard just to hold them in place to stop them wiggling around if you haven't done the uh, whole size thing to make them uh, press fit in there uh, like this one hasn't, so that'll work a treat. And we feed 12 volts in and she works a treat. Almost bang on. There's a 680 ohm uh, external resistor, no touchy, it's 170 volts and uh, that sets your uh, output voltage. So yeah, beauty. But I know what you're thinking, will it power an array of Nixies? I've only got seven, haven't got eight, but eh, near enough. And bingo, there we go, it's drawing uh, 5.6 watts or 24 milliamps. Now let's have a look at Dave Cab for a minute. Uh, we've got our 170 volt uh, anode power supply by experiment. Around about 22k should do it for a single uh, display. And then for multiple uh, displays along here, then you would have a separate resistor going up like that. You'd have another 22 K like that and because only one segment, uh, one, well, it's not a seven segment display, only one digit is on at any one time, you don't have to worry about uh, sharing current through the different segments like you would if a, you had a traditional seven segment display here powered through a single resistor, a single dropper resistor. And the other difference between driving a traditional seven segment display is, it's in the name, seven segments. You would have seven drive lines coming in like this for the seven different segments of your display. But because this is a uh, digit based display, we want to do zero uh, to nine, we need 10 separate lines or 11 if we want uh, one for the decimal point as well. So that rules out our driver chip being your traditional BCD to seven segment display driver because this is not a seven segment display. So we basically want like a latched uh, shift register type thing coming in so that, you know, we've got a uh, clock line coming in here like this and then a latch line coming in as well and then it shifts the digits because you don't want um, all of your outputs to uh, uh, change like in sequence as you shift the data through like this. You don't want to see that so you want to have an internal latch so you clock it in and clock the data in that you want to display and then uh, hit the latch, strobe the latch line and that'll transfer the data boom all over and display the digit you want. But of course the problem is the 170 volts up here. Um, so that means that uh, this chip has to have 170 volts, say, you know, around it to 200 volt capability. It's got to be a high voltage output driver. And of course, it can't be a totem or pole output. It's got to be a open collector output like that. So, or an open drain if it's a MOSFET, whatever. Um, so we need individual high voltage driver transistors driving each one of these digit lines. And if we've got 10 of them times eight digits, we've got 80 drive lines at least. But if we include decimal points, we've got 88. Love 88. We're gonna see some serious shit. Now, of course, you should be saying, oh, Dave, you can multiplex the things. You only need the one driver chip and then all the lines would be common like this. And then we can uh, install a transistor up on the high side here to uh, drive each one and you can multiplex it and yeah no worries you can multiplex Nixie uh, displays like this they're fast enough to handle it. Now that would work a treat except for the fact that uh, your driver chip that drives the base of this puppy also has to be a high voltage output driver so you'd need another high voltage transistor here NPN to actually uh, drive this high voltage transistor so if you did that you'd still need a two transistor solution for each of your eight segments. So yeah, I could multiplex this display, but you're going to have higher peak currents, it's going to be dimmer, it's a bit of an unknown, it's dicking around, and I, yeah, I don't think I'll do it. I think I'll just go for a direct drive solution, so I need like a huge number of 
driver chippies like this are effectively, if I could find one that had 10 outputs, one to drive each individual display like this. And there is an old uh, 7400 series TTL chip that's designed with high voltage open collector outputs, designed for driving Nixie tubes, but um, it's obsolete now. I don't even think you can buy it. It's not available in LS or HC or any of the other families. It's 74. I think it's the 74141, is it? Um, and yeah, no, we'll find another solution. So, of course, one easy solution is we can just get shift registers, you know, 74HC259s uh, or something like that, whatever your favourite latched uh, shift register solution is, and then we can just power external high voltage transistors like that. But you'd need 10 of them, so we're going to look at, uh, we would need um, 80, let, let's say 88 external transistors plus 88 external resistors, then you've got to solder those all on the board, and oh, that's not fun, so yeah, maybe, you know, that's the easy, that's the jelly bean solution. Um, but we'll see if we can uh, find an off-the-shelf chip to do it. If we can't find uh, a suitable off-the-shelf uh, solution that's readily available at a reasonable cost, then we'll go for the external transistors. But I'm just sort of like reducing external uh, parts count by uh, trying to do that, because we don't need, if we find a direct solution like this, we don't need the external resistors, so we save 88 resistors in our circuit, we don't need the 88 uh, transistors as well and um, because we've only got the one dropper up here per display so I like the direct drive solution you get a known constant brightness you don't have to dick around with multiplexing and all that sort of stuff but multiplexing if you're really short on space and everything else maybe you'd use a multiplex solution but yeah I am going to go for d direct drive now, if you were going for an external transistor solution, as I said, it's got to be a high voltage transistor. So you can't just use some sort of jelly bean thing like a, a double two double two, for example. Um, it's only got uh, 40 volts collector emitter voltage, for example. You can't use like a classic uh, BC547. That's, you know, it's better, but meh, you know, it's still not going to do the business. We need a high voltage transistor. So let's do a parametric search. So that's pretty easy. Just go into your parametric uh, search engine of choice. I'm going to use DigiKey here. I'm in uh, discrete BJT transistors. I'm not going to look at uh, MOSFETs, nice hardy BJTs. We want an NPN, of course. Um, so we're going to fil apply filter. We've still got 9,000 or something of those. And then we're going to do the collector emitter. Breakdown voltage, boom, boom, boom. Let's say 200 volts and above i mean you know now we're getting like we don't really want a massive voltage up there i mean you could go right up to 1200 volts but we're talking about you know ridiculous sort of transistors so i'm going to just go say 200 to 400 for argument's sake here we go in there and um here we go f mmt458 if you want a uh, surface mount jobby bst 39s and of course you could um sort by your uh, breakdown voltage here, no worries whatsoever. And or you could choose, you know, if you wanted a through hole solution, you'd go for a through hole. Ah, oh, yes, nice uh, SOT 223 package there, one of my favorites. Um, they're just like really nice to solder. I just enjoy soldering those anyway. Um, yet there's no shortage of high voltage transistors to choose from. And of course, if you wanted to find, you know, what is the jelly bean uh, one, then generally uh, sort by price is probably going to get that for you. You know, two cents a pop. There you go, up <laughs> 2.6 cents. But that is in uh, 10,000 quantity. But yeah, there's no shortage. Oh, there's a through hole, a 2N6517. Oh. So you just pick out a data sheet for a couple of these and any of these will do the job. This is the 2.6 cent job. There we go, you know, 300 volts and... Uh, collector base voltage 300 volts 200 volts you know, no problems whatsoever the uh, 458 series here available in uh, either a SOT uh, 23 which is really nice and small uh, just be careful of the uh, you know having your traces uh, too close at high voltages on your PCB and stuff like that just watch your clearances or the uh, SOT 223 package as well and it's um, these are all going to do the business 400 volts no worries now, if you were going to go for the external uh, transistor solution, then you would need a, well, you would like to have a 1 of 10 uh, decoder. Um, in this case, here's the 74141, which is now uh, completely obsolete. And this one does have the built-in uh, driver transistors for the Nixie tube uh, display here. And a 1 of uh, 10 decoder is basically just um, a 4 
uh, binary inputs here and it turns on one of 10 outputs and that's exactly what you want because you don't want any it's not a seven segment display it's not really like you're going to have two outputs on at the same time now you know you can go in and search digiki i just actually search for one of uh 10 decoder and um you know and up come the usual 4007 400 series ones but none of these because they're obsolete none of these are uh high voltage uh, jobbies, I don't believe. So we're barking up the wrong tree there. Now, as I mentioned before, a good solution for this might be uh, shift registers, for example. That's the one I'm looking at. So you go into uh, logic and shift register category, and bingo, what pops up first? Well, the classic Jelly Bean uh, 74HC595. But of course, they you'd need external uh, drive transistors, external resistors for that. Um, and, you know, hey, you could do that. Choose any flavor. But uh, I think that if we go in here and uh, let's try and find one with open collector outputs, and maybe we'll get lucky and find one that actually has a high voltage open collector output. So here's the output type. Uh, you don't want uh, complementary differential, all that sort of stuff. You don't want to push pull your totem pole output. Nope, you want open collector. And of course, you could go for uh, open drain as well. Hang on, how much does that give us? A number up here, one, one remaining. And if we go open drain, that gives us 174. Okay, so let's apply our filter there and let's have a look down here. Um, uh, TI 8-bit shift register once again like an 8-bit one you'd need multiple chips one chip couldn't handle just one display because we've got uh, 10 lines and so what we want is probably the larger packages and they're going to be more uh, specifically designed for driving large numbers of things like this so I you know there's I think there's more chance of there being a high voltage one in there so let's go from like 20 pin uh, dip upwards shall we so let's uh Let's just filter out all the uh, smaller stuff and let's uh, take a look at what we've got. Hello. This is what I'm looking for. Anything with HV in the number. HV stands for high voltage. Microchip. Um, <laughs> that's microchip. That can't be traditional microchip. That's got to be um, one of the company's microchip uh, bought. So we can go in and have a look. But yeah, look, 220 volts. Bingo, 32-bit serial to parallel uh, shift register. They're available, five bucks sixty-seven. Yeah, you know, they're a little bit, a uh, little bit pricey, but you know, it's a one-off. We've only got a few of them. They've got 200 in stock. They're in a 44-pin uh, QFP package. Here we go. No, it is branded microchip. So there you go. Um, I don't know if they were. Yeah, they probably got that technology from some company they bought. Would be my guess. Anyway. High voltage, uh, low uh, low voltage serial to high voltage parallel converters with open drain outputs. N primarily designed for use as a driver for electroluminescent displays. Can also be used requiring multiple high voltage current seeker capabilities. Inkjets, plasma, vacuum fluorescent or large matrix LCD. This is exactly what we want. Here we go. Data input, clock, strobe, output enable. Aha, this is not a latched one. So we don't want this. We want a latched type. Because if we try and shift data in there, you've got multiple chips, then you'd actually see these things updating on the display. You don't want that. You want to shift the data in and then latch it, boom, all at once across all the displays. So let's have a look at another uh, microchip one. This is a 32-bit. And if we open this, bingo, it's a Supertex. Um, so this is where they uh, got these from. They just haven't uh, changed the data sheet to uh, microchip yet. So um, sync current, 100 milliamps, no worries. Um, inkjets, electrostatic, electroluminescent displays, and bingo, latched output. Data input, 32-bit shift register, and uh, a data output, so then you can cascade it to the next one, so you can have multiple uh, ones of this. So how many chips of these do we need? Uh, we need three of these uh, chips, and they've got the output MOSFET drivers for driving that. Um, so what is the maximum output voltage here we go ha ha 230 volts bingo 220 maximum high output voltage 220 that will do the business thank you very much are they in stock they well they got 57 in stock you know they're seven bucks 91 each bit pricey but you know we're getting towards a solution here you can keep going and maybe try something find a bit something a bit cheaper more available more uh, jelly beany maybe but you know the, the, we're out of the realms of jelly bean now when we start searching for a high voltage 
uh, driver for these sorts of uh, you know specific serial driver ap application things. And of course, you might be thinking, oh, Dave, use one of the ULN, uh, you know, 2000 series jobs, you know, the 2003. Well, if you go look at those, they're all like 50 volts, 80 volts. They're like, yeah, they don't really do the business. We can go from maximum downwards. Best one we've got here, 80 volts. Not going to do it. Let's actually have a look at what the logic supply voltage is. You might think, oh, it's 5 volts or 3.5. Yeah, you know, that's a natural assumption. No, this one is designed for 12 volt operation, minimum 10.8. And aha, does it have, you know, regular CMOS TTL compatible in inputs? Nope. The high level input voltage. Look at this, VDD minus 2. So uh, to get a high on the input when you're feeding your data and your clock in and everything else and your latch uh, signal, then you need a 10 volt logic signal so these regular inputs here are not compat even compatible with 5 volt TTL logic useless so if you're driving this from your uh, Raspberry Pi or Arduino or whatever um, you know microcontroller solution you're using uh, it's not going to work. You're going to need a logic level translator, either a logic level translator chip or a you know a transistor pull up uh, type arrangement or whatever. But you're going to need something. What a pain in the ass. But granted, um, we do only have where we only have to drive one of these because they'll be cascaded together. So we only have to drive the data input. Yeah, the data input, the clock and the latch enable and well, if you're going to use the blanking line or whatever you tie the other ones and we do have 12 volts available we're going to uh, we've got that for the power supply for the high voltage power supply so that's okay so that 12 volts kind of worked out okay and then the data out here that would be at a, at the 12 volt level so it can easily drive the input for the next one but yeah so we only need like three logic level translator lines so i guess that's not too bad but oh. You know, if you rushed into buying this, hooked it up, and then you didn't look at that, didn't think to look at that, you would have come a gutter. Trap for young players. But wait, hold on to your hat. Microchip have thought of everything. Look, uh, let's go to the list again, sought by just Microchip. They've got a 16-bit uh, serial one in a 32-pin uh, VQFN, 24-pin, oh, they got an 8-bit one. Anyway, 486 in stock, 2 bucks 20 Let's have a look at this HV509, shall we? It's a high-voltage uh, backplane driver with push-pull outputs. So it's got totem pole outputs. But anyway, 200 volts here. Uh, and let's go look. Whoa, logic level translators. Let's go further down, further down. Let's have a look. Aha, logic level supply voltage, bingo. It can work from 3.3 or 5 volts. No worries, high level input uh, voltage, not a problem. Anything above uh, 0.9 volts, now we're talking. So we don't need the logic level uh, translators here. And interestingly, here is this uh, high voltage output. As I said, it's a totem pole output, but it also has an internal V bias here, which can actually, you can do current limiting with this puppy. So we can um, source or sync, so it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter that we've got a totem pole output. It'll still, um, it's going to survive that. But here we go. Here's typical high voltage output current sync versus the bias voltage for a 200 volt um, uh, supply. And there it is. You can set the current versus the V bias voltage. But of course, uh, we'll well, you could do it with this. So you could actually save, technically save a resistor um, on each one of those uh, uh, displays. So that's awesome. Um, this chip looks like it's going to do the business. 16-bit shift register, 16-bit latch. It's got the data out so that we can cascade them. No worries, it's all latched. It's a translator, I think. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Except for the package. 0.5 millimeter pitch, 32 lead QFN. What a pain in the ass. But hey, if you wanted to, you could have a look at this uh, 8-bit job here. Yeah, there are 3 bucks 23 each, so they're going to be pricey. But if you didn't want to solder that pain in the ass QFN, you could use these 8-bit uh, jobs, and they do the business as well. Um, logic level translator, 5 volts, has got data out, and it's got all the goodness in an SO, 24-pin SO package. So yeah, it's uh, typical supply voltage, 5 volts, so it's compatible with uh, typical micro um, controller 
modules and stuff like that and it's gonna do the business got the same totem pole output doesn't have the v bias but nah you know <laughs> who cares right so that would do the job as well it's just a bit more pricey anyway i think uh 30 odd minutes of waffling is enough for part one here um in future uh, parts i'll uh, uh do the schematic lay out the board talk about what my application is and uh stuff like that so stay tuned catch you next time